This is the X-Lite X403 GT Carbon, and it is the best helmet I would never buy again. As of today, this channel has no sponsorships. This is all my own opinions and experiences. Your mileage may vary by at your own risk. Welcome back to Kaidu Rider, and linked up here before we get into the video is a playlist for all my riding gear. So if you need a reference where I'm coming from with this review, you can see my other helmets up there. Without further ado, let's get into the review of this helmet because it is incomparably good. So here's all the reasons I hate it. First and foremost, let's open it up. When you look inside the helmet, you can probably see here that the cheek pads don't go all the way because it's modular. But for whatever reason, even though I've owned modular helmets before, this one pinches my cheeks. It's been several thousand kilometers. It's been a few months. I would think it's broken in by now, but it still kind of pinches my cheeks in a funny way and I have to adjust it a bit. It is getting better, so that is something I am willing to forgive. The next big thing is, as you probably know, this is a modular helmet and the visor is massive. But what that means is it's a rather loud helmet. Initially, I didn't think it was too loud, but I rode it back to back with my Arai Torcross 3. You may know it as the XD4, and you know that's not a loud helmet, but it's definitely not a quiet helmet like my Shoei GT Air. But this is a loud helmet for a full face helmet. You want a visor this big, you want a modular helmet, you don't really have a choice. It's going to be loud. So again, another hate that I'm willing to forgive. But what can be a little less forgivable is the seal is not always perfect. When I do a shoulder check while riding to either side, a loud whistling, almost like a siren. I live in Japan, so it sounds a little bit like a Japanese police siren. So I'm sure if I check to merge, I'm about to get pulled over and then I realize, ah, it's the helmet. Now the next thing is, let's turn it to the side and I'll open the visor and take off the helmet a bit. Right there it's modular, but if you notice when I close it, it has a perfect seal. It doesn't have a perfect seal. When I got it from the factory at least, it didn't have a perfect seal. So what I had to do was put a little bit of weather stripping on it. Now that's pretty dumb because x -Lite, I don't know what you're doing in the manufacturing, but the fact that you don't have 10 cents worth of weather stripping or some kind of rubber seal like you do around the entire helmet to keep this quiet and keep wind from coming through and making my face very cold on a winter's day, that's just a weird design flaw. But again, 10 cents worth of weather stripping, I'm willing to forgive it. Now, it is a carbon fiber helmet that I got for under 40,000 yen, under 400 US dollars. So it's pretty good for all the features, but still a lot of things on it feel a little cheap. Like on the side, the drop down sun visor, when I'm trying to push it down, it doesn't always go back up. It's very sticky, it's very clicky. And you're seeing right now, not even on the bike, I'm struggling to hold the helmet still and get it to open and close. So that's another thing compared to my Shoei GT Air 2. This is not very good, but again, I can forgive it. Even though it's not as dark as my Shoei either, again, for what the helmet is and what I want it for, I was willing to forgive it. Now, when it comes to putting in comms, I currently have the Cardo Pack Dock Slim. Now I'm willing to forgive some things to say, x -Lite uses the NCOMs from Nolan, their fellow company, to make a specific setup for this. Now that does make it a little difficult to use your own group. For example, my wife does not have an x -Lite, So if we pair up, I don't know exactly what x -Lite's NCOM actually is. Is it a Senna? Is it a Cardo? I didn't look into it because it wouldn't transfer to my other helmets, whereas this one does. But what really bothered me is installing that into the helmet, all the parts fit. But when I take apart the helmet, there's no emergency release cheek pads, which is in my opinion, a bit of a flaw. But when you take it out, it's very brittle and easy to crack the styrofoam inside the helmet. And it also comes apart very easily, which could be a safety feature. It's kind of like a slip plane maybe, but for whatever reason, it's very easy to break the foam when you're installing a headset. If you're not going to use a comm system in your helmet, don't worry about this part. It's not a problem for you. You see it keep falling. That's because the Cardo is not perfectly in the middle. x -Lite makes you mount it in a slightly different way than Cardo wants to. I won't blame anyone, but it makes it lean to the side because the back doesn't quite fit well. Now, this has been a lot to forgive, but there's one thing that stands out which may not matter to you watching, but to me, it matters a very big deal. And it is the reason I've considered selling this to buy a new helmet, the pin lock. There are two big reasons 
I hate it. I bought this helmet as my winter helmet because here in Japan, hot is very hot. I have my Arai Torcross 3 or XD4 for the summer because it vents better than anything that's a road legal high safety helmet. So using this for winter, a good pin lock is a must. This pin lock has two issues. One, you should probably be able to see here in the video. Look how big this visor is. I bought this helmet because of the big visor. I don't actually care too much about the modular point. A helmet like this with a visor like this, it's the only one on the market. We'll get back to that. But as for the pin lock, can you tell that it's literally half the size of the entire visor to the point where when I'm riding, it fogs up down here. You can see the line it creates. It's right through the middle of the visor. It doesn't obstruct your vision so much that you can't see where you're going, but it's actually a smaller pin lock than my Arai. It's a smaller one than my Shoei, which is a regular size helmet. It's smaller than my wife's Arai's pin lock, and she has the most standard Arai helmet. And that is not the worst part about the pin lock. The worst part is, I have ridden with my Shoei for eight hours in a torrential downpour where it was about five degrees outside. It didn't fog once. I've used my Arai for about five or six hours. It snowed for part of it. It never got warmer than three degrees. It never fogged once. To this day, it's never fogged. My Shoei did, but that's when the helmet hit around 30,000 miles or about 50,000 kilometers. So that's a good time for a pin lock to be replaced anyways the whole helmet, hence buying this. This helmet in one hour, maybe an hour and a half at only 10 degrees and sunny, the pin lock is foggy. I've remounted it several times. I don't know what's wrong. I don't know why X-Lite chose to make a half size pin lock when they have bigger pin locks for other helmets. The Nolan version of this helmet has a bigger pin lock, but maybe those fog too. I don't know, I haven't tested them. When I went to an X-Lite distributor here in Tokyo, they said this is the correct pin lock, it's not a mistake, it's just small because it's small, but it just kind of makes this as a winter only helmet a bit of a waste. Right now, I don't have money. I have certain bills that came up as a surprise, so I cannot sell this and buy a new helmet and take the loss and I need a helmet to get around, I live with my motorcycle. So this is going to have to make do for the season. It honestly feels like I have to buy a new helmet for next winter. With that being said, there is one cure for the fogginess, and it is this chin vent or opening the visor. Opening the visor in the winter, what's the point of having a visor? You might as well just be wearing glasses and freeze. As far as the chin vent, again, it's a very big, very good chin vent. It's quite impressive. If this was my summer only helmet, it could work for that. But it blows enough air to defog the pin lock, defog the whole visor. But again, that asks the question, why do I even have the pin lock? And why do I have a full face helmet if I'm going to let the two degree winds into the helmet? I, I just don't understand how they figured that's a solution to making a half size pin lock that fogs. And again, could mine be defective? Maybe. Feel free to reach out to me, x -Lite, if you have a bigger pin lock that does not fog. I'd happily take it and put up a new video, but this is just unacceptable. And that's way too many things to forgive in one helmet that cost $400. With all that and with all the quality things and the fact that the foam is almost broken already, not so much that it's not safe, don't worry, mom, I don't ride in dangerous helmets. But it's enough to say that even if the pin lock was good, even if x -Lite reaches out to me with a super pin lock, it works, it doesn't fog, it's more than half the visor, this feels the quality of a one-year helmet. It doesn't feel like it's gonna make it through two seasons. Even though my Arai is going into its second season, third season, my Shoei saw over that 50,000 kilometer, 30,000 mile mark. I could probably keep using it, it's just, it's seen everything. This is not a helmet that I would use for the around the world trips. This is a helmet that will be on the shelf on display within a year. Now, why, if it's so bad, do I love it? Well, the first thing is it's lightweight and carbon fiber. Good or bad to x light, but a carbon fiber helmet is lighter, it's easier when you put on the miles, it's less strain on your neck. Arguably safer in that sense, but carbon fiber is pretty cool. The next is the modular feature of taking the chin off to put it on. I could put my forehead against here and roll it back to keep all my hair perfectly tucked in as I grow it out. If you don't like modulars and you're not growing your hair out, it doesn't matter to you. Next season, my hair will be long enough that I won't need a modular. And again, the visor is massive. This is 
almost not wearing a helmet at all. It's so massive. You can a little bit see the forehead. You can a little bit see the chin. And sometimes my chin bumps because it tilts forward a little bit. I don't know if that's my head shape or the helmet, so I won't hold it against it. But this massive visor, it's the only thing in the market short of the Bell Bullet. But if you've ever had the Bell Bullet or seen the Bell Bullet, you know that it has a lot of shortcomings. It's an incredibly loud helmet. You can't seal the forehead. It doesn't come with a pin lock. It doesn't seal good around and there's no gasket. So it needs a lot of love out of the factory and it's much more expensive. For its purpose of a retro helmet, it's possibly the king of the game unless you ride in the winter. Ignoring the Bell Bullet, this is the only thing on the market. Now, if you know the Bell Eliminator, it has a two pane visor. And as far as I know, the only helmet in the world that has that. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but a two pane visor means you're always pin lock ready, don't need a pin lock, never fogs up, really amazing. If they made that for the Bell Bullet, the Bell Bullet would be my easy pick for a helmet. I'll figure everything else out. Out. Till then, if you want a visor like this, if you want full face safety, and Ryan F9 did test the Nolan version of this, that the chin bar is in fact safe. But if you want full face safety and you want this big visor and you want versatility, you're buying this or the Nolan N70. So why is this so good and why do I love it? It has one major feature, it is alone. There is no competition for this helmet. If you want this helmet or this visor, you either figure out the Bell Bullet or you buy this or the cheaper Nolan. And that's polycarbonate, whereas this is all the way up to carbon fiber, not even fiberglass. But x -Lite, if you are watching, if you fix the gap along the chin mounting system so that I don't have to plug it up myself and the pin lock make it at least 70% of the visor and make it not fog. I don't know what the technicality of making that is, so I'm not saying you're a bad manufacturer. I just don't understand why these are the places where you save price. And I personally would say this is a $500 helmet if you fix those things. I would have happily paid extra if you didn't include the pin lock and charged extra for a very high quality pin lock. But since that is not the case, I have to say that this is the last x light that I am buying with my own money. And on that bombshell, thank you everyone for watching. And remember, liking and subscribing puts gas in my tank and keeps reviews like this one happening. So if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. But till then, I'll just say thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. This has been Kaidu Ryder.